ओम सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर कर्वा वहि तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषा वहि ये ओं शाति शाति शाते रामभद्रा रामचंद्रा वेधसे रघुनाथा नाथा सीता पत नम कूजत राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरूह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकोकिल so from today onwards we are with a new text called aditya phudev as you know in the history valmiki rapmayana happens to be the first kavya a poetic language of course the background of valmiki also amazing it the story goes that valmiki was a bandit called ratnaka and he was busy just in taking care of his family because that is what he knew that time nothing else as he was following let us say according to his kula dharma according to him that is what he knew how to make his family to run so that was his let us say duty and of course this is called purusharth this is called prarabdh he came across narada muni and with great discussion let me not stretch too much then of course he changed his mind that he is doing wrong because he went to his family blah blah came back he understood that nobody he is going to be responsible for what i am doing it then that time narada of course gave him mantra the mantra was very simple called ram keep chanting ram but the person was so engrossed and of course the person was so tamas or you can say all sort of negative tendency he could not chant ram so he chanted opposite way called mora so mora means a dead body so when he started chanting mora 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 narad said don't worry keep chanting it but don't give any gap don't give any break and of course when he said mora 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 automatically this is called the purva vasana gets settled down so when the vasana gets settled down so the gyanam when starts you know flourishing or mind becomes calm from mora he jump to ram and the story goes further he was so much engrossed in chanting many years passed away in fact where he was chanting the balmik balim comes and he came up so whole body was being covered with ant he and of course 
Narada one day again reached as usual, <laughs> discovers Rama Rama is coming in such a beautiful way in the place and discovered that in that ant hill there is person and of course he was being brought out and because he came out from Bal Balmika that's why his name became Balmik. So long before the Balmiki was born, the Rama Nama was being given and the story goes further. The importance of Rama Nama, if we start talking, it is amazing that it says beautifully, long before Rama was born, when Dasartha did a papa, Dasartha means the father of Rama. So one of the Rishi was not there, his son gave, okay, look, chant Rama Nama three times. Of course, Dasartha sat and chant and he was freed. Later on, his father came, Rishi came. What did you do? I asked him to chant three times Rama Nama. In that time, father said, you made a mistake. One Rama Nama is sufficient. Why did you ask two more extra? So long before Rama was born, all these things was happened. But to be very specific, here we are looking at Balmiki Ramayana, not other Ramayana. Please understand, this is the difference between Balmiki Ramayana and other Ramayana. Whatever we hear about Rama today, popularly, that is based on different Ramayanas. Whether it is Adhyatma Ramayana, Khamban Ramayana, because each regional language has its own Ramayana. Whether it is a Tulashidasa Ramcharita Manasa, or any Ramayana that you talk, every regional language almost has got one version of Ramayana. But interestingly here, in Balmik, okay, let us say with other Ramayanas, from the beginning, Rama is glorified as God. If you look at any regional language, any regional Ramayana, including Adhyatma Ramayana also, of course Ramcharita Manasa, from the beginning itself, Rama is being presented, glorified as God, as though he was born to do all these things. Whereas in Balmiki Ramayana, it is not like that. Rama is being presented as a human being, as a hero to be followed. In fact, towards the end, Balmiki established because of all these things, he is considered as a God, Purushottama. That's why the Rama or the character of Rama could influence this whole Bharata, you can say the Asia for thousands of years. And till now, if we understand this present India is being united, is only because of the Rama. I'm not giving a political statement, please understand that is another aspect. Because the concept of Rama, that Rama stands for, is something really very nice to understand. In fact, when Maricha, one of the enemy, when he escaped and he presented, who is Rama? Rama Bigrahavan, that is his statement. Those days, it's been talked in Balmik Rama. Rama Bigrahavan. Dharma, Sadhu, Satya Parakrama. Rama is not ordinary person. So he says, Rama Bigrahavan. Bigrahavan is a very gentle man. He is a very gentle person. That means he will not violate anything. And of course, Dharma, embodiment of Dharma. He will never go out of his Dharma. At a given time, what is to be done? He really respects that whatever he may go through. And Sadhu, very gentle. He has got that care and concern. 
and satya parakrama truth at the same time is a well or very strong person that was being said by maricha one of his enemy remember this point so when we listen to this ramu of course we have lot of glorification part that we are not talking here that is not our point point is that when this ramu was born let us say in a given way through the rituals and moreover he was brought up as a prince with his brothers but the circumstances demanded in such a way he was supposed to be the king but he didn't have any other choice he had to go to the forest that to for 14 years and imagine those days to go to forest for 14 years is not a joke means almost you are dead and interestingly of course many people do attribute many things so 14 years because related to his chakra this that all these things that is not our business what i am highlighting here is that when ramu could accept gracefully the prarabdh and because he could accept gracefully prarabdh that's why he could move forward today ramu is being remembered he could have asked no i want my rights please understand when a person fights for right when a person fights for one's own right is being remembered becomes hero then and there after some time becomes zero whereas a person when accepts prarabdha and moves forward you will discover that person not will really grow will become hero all the time so here ramu did not fight for his rights in fact father said take it father gave it hey, take it your right no he said no you have said something i have to respect it in fact because he respected the words of father today we respect ram and when same ram goes forward as we look at this ramayan of course this is towards end this person comes in yudhya kanda this particular sarga comes around 31 verses that we will be seeing very carefully called aditya hrudayam so here in this aditya hrudayam very nicely we discuss when we discuss this about ram and ramayana because ramayana is not complete without the ramayana war it's like in olden days now these things have changed okay in olden days a movie is not complete without a fight <laughs> so there should be some type of fight because if the villain is not being punished then where from you will release your tension where from you will release your frustration why you go for movie two reasons what you could not do if you see hero hero does the do you are happy appa you clap you understand that's why those days i am talking about in 70s hero hero will move around the tree because those days there was no facilities you understand <laughs> all the songs are around the trees but nowadays all the songs are in the shopping mall you understand <laughs> so coming back and also the hilian those days hilian was third party sometimes in the family very rude way but now it is very subtle way can you see this point movie changes what i am trying to is three things in the movie that is our movie hits sentiments and the opposition and of course in ramayana without ramayana yuddha the war how come ramayana will be complete that's why very beautiful is being said what is ramayana if the, the war like can you give the comparison very nicely says gaganam gaganakaram if somebody asks now try to explain try to give any upama like simile 
of sky. What can you say? How to describe sky? You have to say sky is like a sky. There is no other description for sky. You cannot replace with anything with the sky. That's why you say Gaganam Gaganakara Sagaraha Sagaropama. Suppose somebody asks, give or describe about the ocean. Give an example of ocean. Compare the ocean. How will you compare? You have to say what? Hey, look, ocean itself is ocean. There is no other choice for you to explain. So also, Rama, Ravana, Yudham. The war between Rama and Ravana is exactly Rama, Ravana, Yoho, Eva. It is exactly like between Rama and Ravana. Means there is no other explanation. There is no other replacement. Why this is being talked? Beautifully we need to look at. Because Rama, there are two words that we see. One is Ramayana, other one is Mahabharata. Both the words are different. But when we are talking about Ramayana, please understand. One side Ravana, other side called Ravana. And who is Ravana? Ravana is an ordinary person. Ravana has ten heads. He had ten heads, okay? Whenever he wants, not all the time he carries, okay? Don't worry, okay? <laughs> so whenever he wants, he can expand. And of course, whenever he does not want, he can be one. What a beautiful. And he was having everything by hook or crook, whatever way, okay? He could snatch away this Pushpaka Bimana, the first ever that we had a flight. And the flight was, you know what? It will expand by itself. The speed will increase by itself. It can carry one people, it can carry two people, it can carry any number of people. And remember, he snatched from his brother, okay? <laughs> That's another point. What I am highlighting here is, and who is Ravana? Ravana is not an ordinary person. He was one of the most important Pandit who was the son of a Rishi. Of course, there was a wrong thing. Rishi, father is Rishi, but mother happens to be a demon because the demon wanted to take a revenge on the gods. That's why he did, you know, pretended to serve a Rishi and the child was born. And of course, the Vrishava Rishi always was you know, having soft color. That's why all the destruction happens. That is another thing altogether. So this Ravana was a great, let us say, a ritualistic. In fact, if you listen to Shiva Tandava Stotra, if you listen to any, what a great personality Ravana was, you cannot believe it. The story goes further. When Hanuman went to Sri Lanka, Lanka, and he was caught because he saw Sita and finally he was caught. In fact, that time Ravana ordered that this person to be executed, capital punishment to be given, beheaded. That time Bhimishan stopped. No, as per the rule, we cannot. Because after all, a messenger, messenger cannot be beheaded. This is against the rule. In fact, Ravana listened to it. And not only Ravana listened to it, Ravana said, thank you. Okay, we should not cross our limit. So that means it shows that Ravana also had some dharma. In fact, if you look at the whole thing, Ravana had only two problems. One problem was, he was living for his mother. To fulfill mother's wish. Nothing else. And he was being poisoned. All, all the frustrations of mother was completely injected in Ravan's mind. That was only one mistake he was. All the time he was living for mother. And of course when you live for mother, you have to do something wrong. And another wrong thing he did, he kidnapped Sita. Maybe this was the first kidnapping that was being ever recorded in the world. 
So when he kidnapped Sita, and of course, while kidnapping, he has tried his level best to make Sita to understand or accept him as her husband, but it did not happen. That was only his mistake. Other than this, if you look at with reference to Ravana, nowhere he has gone wrong. Yes, he had lived for his mother. Because of mother's advice, he has done everything, not because of his. At the same time, he was maintaining his lifestyle. He was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. In fact, Shiva was with him all the time. Okay, last moment Shiva left him, that's another story altogether. Because when he became arrogant, he did not bother about <laughs> Lord Shiva at all. The story was, as Shiva was a Kailash was taking, he was taking to uh, Sri Lanka. So it got stuck in Tamil Nadu, okay? Because Shiva was being kept on the ground in Tamil Nadu, it is stayed till now. That's another story altogether goes. So when we look at the lifestyle of Ravana, was not ordinary person at all. Now interestingly, if you look at our life, our life is always war between Rama and Ravana. This is what I would like to come to the point. So Ravana is nothing but our mind. <laughs> With all informations, can you see? Any time it wants to expand, it will expand. <laughs> Any time it wants to come back, it becomes one. With all sort of conflict. And of course it lives for others. Whether it is lives for mother, lives for father, lives for brother, lives for somebody or other. Can you see this point? And whenever you live for something, you completely dedicate your mind. In fact, that person's life, that person's thinking becomes your thinking. And whole life, you do that. And of course, once in a while, you do some mischiefs, okay? Because mind needs some, do not freak out, you understand? <laughs> mind needs to go away, enough tired of listening to others. Let me go out also once in a while, you understand? This is what the Ram, and who is Ram? Ram, please understand, respected, don't, did not leave for father. He respected the words of father. So living for somebody, respecting somebody, there is big difference. So when you live for somebody, there is insecurity. Whereas when you respect somebody, you have gratitude, you have growth. So the fight between Rama and Ravan means, when I want to live for somebody or I want to respect somebody, so all the time, my natural tendency says, let me live for somebody. Because if I live for somebody, in return, that person will live for me. Can you see this point? We said, you know, let us scratch each other back. Let me scratch your back. In return, you scratch my back. Perfectly, we are together. Whereas when you start respecting others, hey, there is no guarantee that other person will respect you. In fact, that is what happened to Rama. Rama disrespected everything, but Rama did not get any help to whom he respected. In fact, when Rama went away, of course people cried, people came, he did not take the help of anybody, anybody. But finally what happened? Because he kept respecting and respecting and respecting, then what happens? Finally, all other people, including monkeys, started supporting him, started respecting him. That's why we have beautiful saying that when your own people do not support, don't worry, outsider will support. Whereas when your own people will support, that time no outsider also will support either, like Duryodhana. For a Duryodhana case, what happened? All his known people supported him, but no outsider support, he got it. That's why destruction happened. However, coming back to the point, this Rama and Ravana in me. One side, I want respect, live with a sense of gratitude. Other side, no, 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 I want to live for others with my insecurity, 
with everything. Now when this fight takes place, remember, time to time this fight happens. The story here comes, I'm bringing it to the story part, coming to the story part. When the war happened, first Rabban had come. There was a fight and Rabban went back. Then after Rabban went back, he sent all his people, one after another. In fact, all his sons, including the Indrajit the Great, and of course his brother called Kumbhakarna. Just I am giving you the background. So many of them came. That means everybody was killed one after another. Now what happens? When you start respecting your life, when you start respecting others, now when you live for somebody is living for our mind is living for others, always there is war. Can you see this point? The basic principle meets you first. Then you want to avoid because you have some power. Then finally what happens? Then you start meeting with all other family members of, for whom you are living for. And if you really manage them to overcome, then finally what happens? The real culprit called Ravana comes to meet you. And when the real culprit Ravana comes to meet you, Remember that time you will be completely mentally exhausted, tired and of course you will not have any strength to meet Ravana either. This is the situation, okay? This is the background of Aditya Hrudaya. Now Rama standing to fight in front of him Ravana already. And all the people are dead, no more now. All the tricks and techniques means that all the things have been cut up. Only the last one, it's like you know, we say the soccer goal, okay? After tired, 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 you do, 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 do. Last goal, you understand? Either you gain one point or you lose. There is no other in between, okay? <laughs> If you manage to win, make one goal, you win. If you don't manage to one goal, you are a loser. But already whistle started blowing, but you don't have strength to lift the ball. Forget about fighting and running and getting a goal, making a goal. Now in this scenario, what will you do? This is the exact situation of Ram. This is what we call here Prarabdha. Because Rama was born with a collective Prarabdha. Let us not forget that. He was not born with individual Prarabdha. That's why his birth was unique. He was born out of a sacrifice. From the fire. Because something came. That's why he was born in a different way. So when he was born with a collective Prarabdha. That means definitely collective, collective good prarabdha, definitely always right time you will get right help from different people. Now when this situation happened, that's why we say when there is a fight between that who for whom you are living and to whom you are respecting, these are the two things when happens, you need with whom you are associated. Who is next to you? That determines the game or that determines the win or success. It's like exactly we say, especially in Indian way cricket, always in hometown or home pitch, that particular cricketer is always strong. Because that fellow when he comes, the people make such a noise, automatically he is boosted. Okay, sometimes they become zero and that's another case he is all together. <laughs> that's very rare, okay? <laughs> and of course, when he becomes zero, what happens later on? That's another point. Let us not talk. So in home ground, always the person takes it very easily, fast. And remember, Ravana is in home ground. In fact, whenever you live for others, always you are in home ground because you are very comfortable. You know your territory very well. Whereas when you respect somebody and leave, definitely you are not in home ground at all. 
and because you are tired, exhausted, all the way, nothing to do. But interestingly, what happens? Now let us read with this background so that it becomes easier to go to the verse. Okay? Tato yuddha parishrantam samare chintayastitam ravanam chagrato drushtva yuddhaya samupasthitam Tato yuddha parishrantam samare chintayastritam stitam ravanam chagrato drushtva yuddhaya samupasthitam daivataishya samagamya drashtum abhyagatoranam Upagamya Bravit Rama Agastyo Bhagavan Rishi Deva Taisya Samagamya Drashtum Abhyagatoranam Upagamya Bravit Rama Agastyo Bhagavan Rishi Beautiful, okay? <laughs> now these two verses will take together. So he says beautifully Tato Yuddha Parishanta so that means what? Now Tato, afterwards, because it's a continuation, this one chapter we are looking at. In the Ujiddha, means in the battle, in the war, he exhausted. That means Rama is completely exhausted. And he says, uses Tato Yuddha Parishrantam, again Samare. Samare means in the battle. So that means in the battlefield, Ram is exhausted both. Externally means physically, also mentally. So the war that is outside, also war inside. What for I am fighting? Because remember, here when Rama, Ravana is fighting, Ravana is fighting to establish his ego. Whereas when Rama is fighting to rescue somebody's life, there is more risk. It is exactly I compare Tom and Jerry fight. <laughs> if you observe this, one is running for life, other one is having fun with life. Can you see this point? And whoever is running for life always wins. Whereas who is having fun with life, never wins in life. So here Ravana is fighting for his ego to have fun. Because he has everything with him. The best of anything and everything. As the story goes about Ravana, I think long back I had shared this story. I don't know whether in this class or one in class. The Ravana was such a person. So he was talking to his one of the uncle, he's called his minister. So my uncle said, Look, it is the time to give Sita. It's not good. The Ravana said, What? Are you are we afraid of or what? No, 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 we are not afraid. Who says? Why Ravana to be afraid of somebody that way human being? Suddenly Ravana, say, Ravana says, But I am told, this man is the incarnation of God. Then the minister says, Not only he is incarnation of God, along with him his brother also part of incarnation. Then suddenly Ravana changes his tone. What are you talking? You think you are, we are afraid of God? Look, in our place, we don't water plants. Indra God comes and waters all the plant. We don't have any sweeper. The Vayu Devata, the wind God comes and sweeps. So when all the gods and goddesses are our servant, you think we will be afraid of this God to people? No, no, no. Who said this? Of course not. Why should you be afraid of these people? After all, nothing to be afraid. In fact, you are the boss. But, now what is that but? Actually, then Ravan says, but I have heard that there is somebody called Hanuman that who came in, came and like him there are so many people are there. Yes, yes. In fact, not only Hanuman. There is Sukriva. There is, you know, all this uh, Nala, Anila, a lot of people are there. In fact, they are more ferocious than Hanuman. Hanuman has got Sadbuddhi at least. He doesn't violate, but these people, God knows what they are going to do. 
Then that time Ravan says, Do you think that I am afraid of all these monkeys and ordinary people? You know, I am who am I? I am Ravan, the king. Who is the boss of all the three lokas? Yes, yes. Definitely you are boss of three lokas. But definitely now you are not a boss of yourself yet. Okay? What are you talking? No, no, what I am trying to say is all the processes only when you fight with Ravana, as a Rama and winning, then only we are the boss. Okay, let us not fight for it. So we say, how you play with the words, how you live with the king, you have to go along with the king while communicating it. However, Ravana is such a personality that the Indra was there. In fact, the story further goes that all the planets were tied down by him so that nothing should go wrong with him. That's why Hanuman rescued all the planets. That's why Sun is indebted to Hanuman when a person has got Sunny Dasha. If you praise Hanuman, Sunny Dasha gets reduced. That's why in India, Hanuman is very much fondly remembered by everybody, at least for this Sunny sake. How to escape from Lord Sunny? It's not a joke, okay? <laughs> However, coming back to the point, here he says, when there is there was a fight, both mental war and of course external war, what happens? Chintaya stitam. Now Rama is standing ahead, ahead of what? Of course, he is standing Yudhaya for the battle, Samupasthitam, Ravana. In front of Ravana, seeing Ravana, he is standing but with a lot of worries and anxieties. Imagine, as I explain this incident, what goal you have to make this occur? Time has come. Person is about to blow the wish. You have to run, but you don't have strength. Lift your leg. Physically you are tired. Of course mentally you are already gone. What to do? What not to do? Now Rama comes across this situation. And imagine Ravana in his own homeland. Well equipped. And he will not follow any dharma right time. Remember? Being Asura demon, because in war there is a rule, the rule has to be protected, but Ravana is not going to follow, because nobody followed that from his team. Whereas Rama had followed, everywhere Rama has followed, till the end. Because there are certain war policy, you cannot violate, but nowadays nobody respects, okay, every attack happens only in the night, okay, as per the rule, war cannot happen in the night at all. That's why in the law, that is very beautiful, say, 100 criminal can be excused, but one innocent person cannot be punished. Just for the sake of one innocent person, 100 criminals can get excused. Because that is not the law, that is not dharma. And yuddha always dharma oriented. It is not establishing one's own self. Nowadays, war is establishing one's own ego, country's ego, or person's ego. There is no country ego. Country doesn't have ego, okay? Please. Country is a country. It's a person's ego, the one who hates country at that moment. So establishing one's own ego is nowadays war. And here, Ravno stands for establishing dharma, not violating any other, any dharma thing. Means always he has to respect dharma. Whereas Ravno will violate. Now Ravana is completely dressed and he has of course all his chariots, the best chariots. Luckily Rama got the chariot also equally good. But interestingly, this is called the God's grace. When you are with Dharma, always you are being protected. And how to know whether you are protected or not? To know that where you are associated, who is with you where? Your association determines that whether you are in the side of dharma or you are in the side of adharma. 
So here what is the association? Let us read. This is the next verse. Daivasya, okay, we have read it. Daivasya samagamya, drashtum abhyagaturanam, upagamya bramit ram, agastyo bhagavan rishi. Now, to see this word, of course, many gods arrived, they were there. Because they wanted to also watch the war. So this determines that Rama was with Dharma. Because when war is there, who is supporting where? All the gods are standing next to Rama place, not next to Rama. That's why whether you are with Dharma or not, how to know who is standing next to you, who is supporting you, who is encouraging you, who is really genuinely with you. If you discover these people are genuinely with you, that will determine your win or not. So that's why when all the gods and goddesses, when they were there to see the war, along with them, who was there, called Bhagavan Agastya. A rishi called Agastya. And he is being considered here as Bhagavan. Bhagavan means called revered one. You can say God. Why he is God? Because we say a jnani is called as God. A Brahma jnani is Brahman that we have seen in many occasions. Brahman is nothing but God. And of course we can take this way also that as a revered person, both ways we can take. So if you look at, that's why many Gyani Purushas are being referred as being considered or as being called as Bhagavan. So here means, here Agastya Rishi, what happens to be there? So when Agastya Rishi was there, as you know, such a great personality, who is Agastya Rishi? The story goes about Agastya. In fact, one of the Kadi Vidya of Shri Vidya comes from Lopa Mudra, wife of Agastya, Rishi. In fact, Lopa Mudra initiated Agastya Rishi. In fact, Lopa Mudra becomes guru for Agastya Rishi. So that we say, sometimes we do it, called uh, 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 Sauvagya Panchadasi. That mantra was being given, this is in Sividya, Sauvagya Panchadasi by Lopa Mudra. It's very powerful. Okay? So in fact, sometimes that is being called as, <laughs> okay, let me not get into Sividya mode. Okay, let me withdraw now. So which is really Dutch, very good. So. How? Because it's a combination of Bala and Panchadasi. I gave you almost okay. <laughs> How? When this Agastya Rishi, the story goes a lot about Agastya, he was so powerful that to balance, they say, Agastya Rishi was sent to South. Because there was an imbalance, so that's why if Agastya Rishi, let me not get into the story, partly it's a long story to go. That's why Agastya Rishi remained in, uh, what do you call, in South, till now he's in South India, okay? He, he could not come back. <laughs> However, let us not get into too much. This Agastya Rishi, being a Brahman Gyan, being a Yogi, Onimas, Lagima, Garima, all the Siddhis were there with him, all Ashta Siddhis were there with him. Now, having all the Siddhis and that too a Brahma Gyani have gone there to see the war, means what? Definitely supporting, he wishes also Rama to win, but he discovers Rama is completely exhausted. Rama is completely tired of. Rama doesn't have any more strength to stand. That's why what it is? Wait. I am here, okay? Let me transfer something to you. And what he is going to transfer? What he is going to do? That definitely we will see tomorrow. Please close your eyes.
पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शांति शांति शांति